Good morning. I consider myself extremely fortunate. My hobby, my passion, my profession, they're all the same, which is adventure and exploration. Um, it's this quest for adventure that has taken me to the North Pole, the South Pole, down some of the wildest rivers on the planet, and to some of the remotest parts of Earth. This morning, I'm going to take you on two expeditions to Greenland, which I did with my daughter, Dia. And uh, while I said I've been to all these beautiful places of our planet, it took these two expeditions with my daughter to really show me, to really, for me to understand what the spirit of adventure is all about. Can we have the next slide, please? So Greenland, as you know, is the world's biggest island. Uh, Greenland, they say, was the world's first marketing hoax by the Vikings. It's a misnomer. It should really be. There's 650,000 square miles of ice here in Greenland. Um, the first expedition we did was an 18-day sea kayaking expedition where we kayaked along the fjords of Western Greenland. We saw whales. We saw Arctic foxes. We caught fish. Um, it was just pristine wilderness and a fantastic feeling to be out there. Um, but you know, as we as we were kayaking, we did see signs and symptoms that showed us that this beautiful planet of ours is a planet in peril. For instance, because of global warming, um, my daughter Dia and all of us we had to wear these nets. Um, because of the increase in temperature in the Arctic regions, these mosquitoes are breeding in vile profusion. Not just that, our Inuit uh, boat captain also told us that a lot of the glaciers were receding and the Inuit were, for the past seven winters had not been able to go out seal hunting um, because the sea ice hadn't frozen. Um, of course, when you're on an expedition or sea kayaking expedition, and in case you topple over, you do something called an Eskimo roll, right? Toppling over is the easy bit, um, which is a series of coordinated maneuvers upside down underwater to upright the, the, the kayak. Of course, in these frigid waters, when you do an Eskimo roll, like the one I just showed you, your brain goes completely numb and it gets you to do some very crazy things. Um, while, we were, while we were on this expedition, we took a day hike and uh, we, we saw the Great Greenland Ice Cap, which is the south, second largest chunk of ice on our planet after Antarctica. And uh, Dia and I, Dia was 14 at the time, Dia and I decided that we were going to ski across the Greenland Ice Cap. Dia was Dia had just turned 17 when we embarked on this expedition. She was the youngest person ever to attempt a Greenland crossing, which is about 550 to 600 kilometers from the west to the east coast of Greenland. We were given the national flag. And it was when we flew from Denmark to a place called Kangalusuak on the west coast of Greenland. And I looked from the window and I looked at the terrain below. That's when I realized that, gosh, I think I'd made a huge mistake by taking this young 17-year-old daughter of mine with me. Um, Dia loves chocolate, so got her a lot of chocolate to make sure that she was a happy camper all along. Um, we skied from the west coast of Greenland, um, just over here, all the way to a small Inuit village called Isartok on the east coast of Greenland. In fact, within 36 hours of leaving Delhi, this was early May when I believe the temperature here was something like 42 or 44 degrees Celsius. Within 36 hours, we were on the Greenland ice cap where the ambient temperature is about minus 20 degrees Celsius. Um, the first couple of days, I was a, that's our team. I was a very worried father. You know, in fact, there was a storm on the second day. 
that literally picked up Dia and she fell. And, uh, but she got up and she kept going. And what was amazing was on day two, after the storm, she took the global positioning system which we were using to navigate and she actually led the way. Um, on a typical day, we would ski for about 8 hours, 10 hours, um, trying to do about 30 kilometers every 2 hours. We would take a quick little break. Of course, the biggest challenge uh, when you're on an expedition like this is, of course, there is the physical aspect of it, you know, skiing for 8 hours plus every day. But it was also managing the extreme cold conditions. Um, that's a blizzard. And during a blizzard, navigation gets extremely hard. The coldest temperature we faced on this expedition was minus 45 degrees Celsius. That's camping on the Arctic ice. And on this expedition, we had two teams of dog sleds with us as well that carried all our stuff. And these wonderful, very happy Inuit uh, people, two of them, um, while we didn't speak a word of their language and they didn't speak a word of ours, which was either English or Hindi, uh, but I think adventure has its own language and we just we really warmed up to these wonderful Inuit people. And of course, as team members, we had 28 Huskies with us towing those sleds. These Huskies are very low maintenance. They, they pull that sled weighing uh, 400 kilos for the whole day. And all they really live on is a mug full of food. And they, they eat a little bit of the snow. That's Apra, one of the lead dogs. And you know, we were past the Arctic Circle, so we had 24 hours of daylight. But these dogs, they just curl up, cover their nose with their tail, and they sleep out in the elements. Of course, we humans, it's my husky, um, we, we humans, we need uh, these special polar systems, polar sleeping systems, and a whole lot of tricks to survive in these kind of conditions. We navigated past something which was straight out of a James Bond movie. Um, during the Cold War, the Americans had built these distant early warning systems which were radars. And after the Cold War ended, we were, um, they were abandoned. We were actually able to go inside and have a look. It was quite eerie. Even the radar was, um, was still there. We carried on and I'd like to share with all of you what our so-called secret formula of success was on this expedition. It's what we call in our outdoor jargon, pods, where P stands for previous preparation. Confucius said it in the 6th century BC. Um, and that, in, that took months of previous preparation, physical fitness, your gear, logistics, and so on. O was for being super organized all the time, not just thinking about where you were, but always thinking a few days ahead. D was for being deliberate. Deliberate in everything you do, because you're in an error environment. Um, you know, rescue is something you can never take for granted. You make a mistake and it can have some very, very severe consequences. D was also about delib being deliberate about what you spoke to each other. And I thought if it made a huge difference if you lived on a very high positive energy plane. You know, you, you had to encourage each other no matter what the conditions. Um, and I think the one thing that always helped was um, a sense of humor in some of these conditions. Of course, for some of us, um, the male members of the expedition, humor revolved around uh, food, hot places, and the pretty lady polar bears. Yeah. S is for being super safe. S super safe. Um, but for us personally, this was a dream come true and um, S was also for having super fun along the way, not just surviving, but thriving in these kind of conditions. That's one of our team members, uh, Tony, we started calling him uh, Tony the Walrus after this shot. And after 20 days of skiing on the, on the Greenland ice cap, uh, 
we were able to see the ocean in the far distance but of course we we knew we have a harrowing descent uh, before us what makes it very tricky is the fact that you you have a lot of crevasses there and some of these crevasses can be covered as well we were lucky we came out unscathed completely unscathed close to the ocean where we started seeing signs of life once again like this little bird that wanted to learn how to ski um, and finally we we took a short boat ride to this village on the left called Isortok from where we helicoptered out. Planting the national flag at the end of our expedition on the Greenland ice cap was a very proud and emotional moment. I must admit that uh, you know this was a dream and I'd like to urge all of you at the back, the students to really, really like Janvi mentioned to dream big. There is no dream too big. If you work hard, if you are steadfast in your resolve, you know, and you take all those challenges that will be thrown at you in the pursuit of your dreams, I don't think there is a challenge too big. So what did I really learn about the spirit of adventure? You've got to hear it from Dia. Here in India, there is still a huge stigma attached to leprosy. Most people ignorantly believe that it is contagious and therefore the children of these leprosy patients are treated horribly. Two years ago, I visited a home for such children in Haridwar and was shocked to find that it was only for boys. I urged the management to change their policy and I set about to raise the money to bring girls to this home. I returned to my community and urged friends and family to pledge money for every kilometer that I would ski on an upcoming expedition to Greenland. The price started at 5 rupees per kilometer, but people got more and more excited. I ended up skiing 500 kilometers across the ice cap and we raised 1 million rupees. With this money, we were able to build a new building for 12 girls. These girls now have the opportunities they never could have dreamt of before. A clean home, three meals a day and an education. You can see how much better their life is. Now, a group of friends who have met through the Global Leadership Forum have committed to growing this into a much larger project. Our dream is to provide housing for ostracized girls in every state of this country. Twelve girls have a new life. Millions more are waiting for the same chance. Can you help? <laughs> so what did I learn about the spirit of adventure from Dia? It's not about conquering nature but yourself. You can never actually conquer nature. Mother nature is supreme. It's about, it's about really conquering your inner self your inner being and about dreaming big and working very hard at making those dreams come true. The spirit of adventure really is about enjoying mother nature in a responsible manner and doing 